of our friends are here in celebration. Celebrate! Wow. Wow. Thank you, Travis. Give him some love. Woo! Yeah, you've got this whole room as your choir. Oh my goodness, this is better than coffee. Are you guys awake? <laughs> Woo! I'm on fire. I already had like four cups of coffee. Woo! <laughs> Just kidding, I only had one. <laughs> the energy is totally moving in me though. Woohoo! So I heard that one bird can't make a pun, but two can. <laughs> Was that a groaner? Come on, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Friends, it's a great day to be alive. Yes? yes? Oh, I've missed you so much. It's only been a week. Like, I was gone last Sunday, and it feels like it's been a month, at least a month, you know? It's so good to be here with you. You guys are all our friends, right? I love that line. All of our friends are here in celebration. That's what we're up to. We're celebrating this thing called life. We're celebrating the greatness and the magnificence that we are in this thing called life, yes? And sometimes our human experience isn't that great, and we get to be here and support and love one another through that process. And then, more often than not, life is amazing, yes? And we get to celebrate and know our good and be together in that joy and goodness. What a great day. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so stoked about this day. So uh, I want to share that. Uh, so last week I went to Asilomar and I was with the Centers for Spiritual Living on the summer retreat and I wish that you could all physically have been there with me, but you were all there with me in spirit, right? You were in my back pocket, in my front pocket, in my heart. You were all around me and oh, it was just so good. And by the way, I heard that Reverend Diane did a great uh, sermon, right? Yeah. Thank you, Reverend Diane. Yeah, very good. I'm so grateful. So good. And so I want to share some of the, the wisdom and the nuggets that I got from Asilomar. And I realize there's so much. And it's going to take me probably the next few weeks to share all of that, right? So we'll get a little bit today and tie that in with uh, the topic for today, which is perfectly imperfect passions. But um, the focus of the retreat, uh, the theme of this retreat was the newness of now. And it was all about retreating, renewing, and reconnecting. And what occurred to me a few days after the retreat was, you know, this concept that we all have of normal and the way that we think of things as normal. And it's, it's kind of like our conditioning, right, our comfort zone and what what we're used to and our daily routines and our lives, that seems to become our normal, right? And we had COVID and that just turned everything upside down, didn't it? Turned everything upside down. Everything that we thought was our normal was not. That was just all disrupted, right? Disrupted. And what a gift that brought us because all of us ended up becoming more than we thought we could and learning new things. Like everyone here probably knows how to use Zoom, right? Right? Yeah, at least Zoom, probably a lot of other things. We learned technology quickly because we had a desire, a thirst, a need for connection with other humans, right? Oh, I just got the God bumps because we needed to connect and we found a way to do it, right? And so, uh, but what occurred to me was that there's not a normal for us to go back to. And we tend to think we have this idea of normal. Well, things will never be that version of normal again before COVID, right? Because everything has changed. We have changed as beings. We've transformed and we're constantly becoming new. And so what occurred to me was that we are building a new normal. We are building a new normal for ourselves and in our community, in society, in the world, right? And so, wow, how powerful is that? We're building a new normal. And then it occurred to me, 
in any transition that we have in our life, right? Things change, the loss of a loved one, we build a new normal. It's what it's all about. Changing in our jobs, a change in our employment status for those of us who retired recently or who have been retired for a while. You know, there's that transformation and you've got to build a new normal. You don't have to get up at 6 a.m. anymore, <laughs> right? You're building that something new, something new. And it's in that building that uh, we become more open to spirit and what spirit wants to experience through us and as us in our lives. And as we become open, we recognize that something new is being birthed and it's not based on the past. Especially that's such a great example going from working to retirement because it's just totally different. And you may take up a new type of work, but it's going to be totally different than what all of the years before were, right? So we're creating a new normal, building a new normal, something. We tend to try to create things based on what we know, based on the past, because we have a reference point. But what would it be like for us to experience the newness of now by allowing divine ideas to come through, get our bloated nothingness out of the way and let the spirit guide us. Let this new idea that is not based on a reference point of the past become our reality. Yes, I see some heads nodding. So yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah, so that's what it's all about. And so this retreat was so wonderful. It was different than the others. Um, I think this was the first one since before COVID, and back in 2019, right? That was the last one. And then we didn't have as much music before, but at this retreat, we had like a speaker and then three songs, and then another speaker and like three or four songs, and then another speaker and three or four songs, and then, oh, let's just have three or four more songs because we just need to, right? And so there was all of this singing and all of this joy and goodness. And what was happening was I was slowly letting go of all of my responsibilities and my to-do list and the things that needed to be done and, you know, the e-news and the editing and the financial aspect of this organization and, oh, yeah, my day job, right? <laughs> letting go of all of it slowly, slowly. And, uh, and it wasn't like I was consciously letting go, like, I got to let go of this. Have you ever tried that? Never works. <laughs> Never works. I got to let go. I'm just going to let this go. The thing that thinks they need to let go is the thing that's holding on. So it's like, what is going on? And so the music and the joy, and then I started seeing people that uh, I knew, and I, saw, I started seeing people I knew like the moment I got there, which was before the retreat even began, and that was filling me up, and, and it was like, wow. And also being in Asilomar um, at, this, at this time, and like remembering my experiences there from the past, right, and recognizing how much I've grown and recognizing how far I have come, which is really, really far. Like, I have grown a lot. I am so glad you guys didn't know me back then. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh my gosh. Wow, she's going, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Right? 15, 20 years ago, and just, wow. So feeling that sense of um, accomplishment and uh, kind of loving myself for all that I've been through and all that I've become and all that is yet to be. Yes? Powerful. And so I heard so much goodness at this retreat, as I mentioned. Now, one of the big things I heard was that the love you give is your legacy. Wow. The love that we give is our legacy. Who we are being consistently, right? That's our legacy. Coming up here every Sunday, it's a legacy, right? 
my interaction with you outside of here is a legacy, except for the competitiveness at ping pong the other day. I was little, we'll get to that story later. <laughs> that, I'm hoping that is not my legacy. Like, when I'm gone, please do not remember me by saying, everybody be quiet, I gotta focus. The serious. Oh man, if that's later, later, okay. So. <laughs> Uh, we had a Gourmets for God event yesterday, and it was at Reverend Diane and Terry's home. Thank you so much. And if you're new, yeah, if you're new here, uh, we have these Gourmet for God events uh, every year, and it is an opportunity for community to get together, you know, outside of uh, service on Sundays and outside of um, classes or workshops or events and just to really, <laughs> really be yourself. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and so community members will host an event and there's food and, you know, you can create whatever you want. And so Reverend Diane and Terry had an event uh, that they created, which was ping pong Mexican food and prizes or something like that, right? And so everyone would be a winner, you know? And, uh, and so it was beautiful. And so the organizers donate it, right? They create the food, they prepare it, and then they offer it, and they all of it, right? And then individuals in the community will bid on the different events, and then whoever wins gets to attend. So beautiful. Later, okay. <clears throat> the love you give is your legacy. And so uh, Karen Drucker and Gary Lynn Floyd sang a song, and it was, You Are Beautiful, True, and Divine. And the words were, When I look into your eyes, I see you shine. You are beautiful, true, and divine. And I love that. That really touched my heart. You are the unique, unrepeatable, magnificent way spirit shows up as itself. Wow, each one of us is a unique and unrepeatable, magnificent way that spirit shows up as itself. And so that, when I get present to that, there is no need for comparison. There's no need for uh, feeling I am less than or unworthy or any of that, right? Because I am the unique and unrepeatable way that spirit shows up as itself. Yes. Yeah. So powerful, and I heard the mantra for our week was, I see the sacred, I hear the sacred, I speak the sacred, all life is sacred. And to have that be the way that we moved through our week on retreat. Now, uh, we were all talking, or they were all talking about how we're moving into a new day together, and this is significant because this is true for us too, as a spiritual community. We're moving into a new day together, and it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And Richard Rohr um, talks about how life shows us through all of our different avenues what's next and how the first half of our life is really about finding our place in the world when the second half is about moving into being of service and being in service in the world in this second half of life and everything begins to shift at that point, doesn't it? Things start to shift and no longer is there this need to be seen or to you know, uh, have certain things in your life that are ego-based and you're more in this space of service and how can I be a presence in the world that is loving and that actually does leave that legacy for people to be altered in the presence of me, right? That's way different than, hey, look at me. <laughs> yes, I love that. And so I heard that once you experience being loved, when you feel that you are unworthy or being forgiven, when you think that you did something wrong, it moves you into a sense of non-dual thinking. You move from a space of meritocracy or quid pro quo thinking to this huge ocean of grace when you stop counting or calculating what's in it for me, what's going to happen, and how am I going to be served by this, which is also important, but it's not your regular, you know, mantra 
as you move through the world. So love is within us. It cannot be destroyed. It can be ignored to the extent that we abandon love. We feel it has abandoned us. Denying love is our only problem, and embracing it is the only answer. Through the power of love, we can let go of past history and begin again. Love heals, forgives, and makes us whole. This is Ernest Holmes. These are the words of Ernest Holmes. And so we remember all of that, right? And, uh, and something powerful that came to me was about Sankofa, which is an African concept, meaning we should retrieve things of value from our knowledge of the past. Sankofa. And so... Um, you know, sooner or later, if you are on any classic spiritual schedule or spiritual journey, some event, some person, some death, some idea, some relationship will enter your life with which you simply cannot cope. Has anyone experienced that? Anyone experiencing that now, right? <laughs> Something enters your life with which you cannot cope using your present skill set, your acquired knowledge or willpower. You can't cope with it. So spiritually speaking, you are led to the edge of your own private resources. At that point, you stumble over a necessary stumbling stone, as is said in Isaiah 8.14, but you must lose at something and then begin to develop that art of losing and letting go. Now, that's the only way it is said that life, fate, grace, God, mystery can get you to change at that point. And it is that space where you've got to let go of those egocentric preoccupations and go on a deeper journey. Right? Yeah, right. And so we do. We let go of those preoccupations, and then we begin to change and transform because we have had this tunnel vision for so long about how it's going to be and how things have to go and how it has to look when spirit all along is saying, come, come, let me show you the way. Let me show you it doesn't have to be that way, right? And finally, we surrender to it and allow it to guide us, and everything transforms which could be the thing that we might be afraid of, right? Because when I got into 12-step, the rooms of 12-step, you only have to change one thing, everything. <laughs> it's like freaking me out, man. But they were right. That's transformation, right? That's transformation, you know? It's that because we go into that cosmic soup, the metamorphosis, like the caterpillar it dies, right? It's going into the, a tomb. It's done. It's done for. But what is about to emerge is this beautiful, glorious butterfly. The caterpillar doesn't know that, though. We don't know that with our own version of what's happening, right? we got to let go and expand. And so there is a story that I just couldn't, I couldn't... Um, not share with you guys. I was so excited about this story. And so I have a friend, uh, his name is Reverend Alan Vukas, and he uh, did a talk at Asilomar, and it was so wonderful. And I'm going to share it with you. So he was the spiritual leader at a community in Florida. I think it was CSL Tampa Bay or Tampa Bay CSL. And he helped found this community, and he was doing really well, but he was working very, very hard. And he felt like he was working so hard that uh, he just couldn't do it anymore. He was done, you know. He was so burnt out. He experienced severe burnout. Has anyone experienced burnout? It's not fun, right? Burnt out, right? And he recognized later that he wasn't making space in his own life to be inspired. He was like expecting everyone else to do it for him. But he wasn't making the space. He was just going, going, going and starting to burn out. And he was burnt out. He said he felt used up like a husk. And so he told his partner, I'm moving to Colorado. And his partner's like, okay, we're moving to Colorado, right? But he told him, I need to move or I'm going to die. Like that's how burnout he was. He felt like he couldn't keep doing this. Now he quickly learned that escapism would not fill his cup. <laughs> 
But he had to go. And his brother lived in Colorado, and his brother called him up and said, hey, I've got this job for you, and you know, you could be the director op of operations here. And he was like, I'll take it. We're moving to Colorado. And so off they moved, Colorado. And, uh, and the job was at a grow house. Now, if you don't know what a grow house is, it's a pot grow. She's smiling. A pot grow house, a, a ha where they grow pot, right? And he's... It's, it is Colorado, after all. So there he goes. Uh, he left the pulpit for pot. <laughs> but anyway, he's going on for, you know, a few weeks, and there's a knock on the door one day, and he's still in his jammies, he's drinking his coffee, and he opens the door, and it's the SWAT team. Right, exactly. Oh. And they have a search warrant, and he thought in that moment, how? did I get here? <laughs> right? How did I get here? Do you have, did you ever have those ones? You're laughing because you've had that moment where you go, like, W-T, yes. <laughs> what the faith? <laughs> what happened? How did I find myself here? What is going on? Um, and it's like, oh my gosh, friends, spirit is calling you. It's coming for you, and it will keep calling you until you listen and move toward it, being all that you came here to be. So my friend Alan, Reverend Alan, left the pulpit for pot, but it didn't work. <laughs> spirit pulled him back. Spirit pulled him back, you know? And it was very clear that when we do what we think we're going to do, Oh, yeah, my brother's got a job for me in Colorado at a grow house. I'm going to be the director of operations. Great idea. I'm out of here, right? Running from something, trying to escape from burnout, uh, rather than create the time for himself to be inspired, take a sabbatical, right? Do something. He had to bounce. So when we do what we think we're, what we think to do, there's no room for spirit to come in, right? When we're doing what we think to do, we're led by ego. And ego is good. We all have it. But this is the ego that's like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm burnt out. And I'm going to figure something out like a Rubik's Cube, you know? Have you ever tried to figure out a Rubik's Cube? You're going to figure it out. And, and then how did I get here? A SWAT team knocking on the door, right? For some of us, it's the spiritual two-by-four. I hear a lot of people say that. A two-by-four, I'm wait, not going to wait for that two-by-four. Uh, or now you can have, I'm not going to wait for the SWAT team to show up at my front door, right? I'm going to listen to spirit. I'm going to take the... Uh, take the guidance from the thing itself, this presence of love. And I was reminded of Jonah the prophet, right, from the Bible. He was called to go to a city to deliver a message. God had called him to do this, but he had a better idea. And if you remember, Jonah got swallowed up by this weird sea creature. What? Is that myth or is it real? Myth. <laughs> but Jonah returned. He returned forgiven, and he was given another chance. So Alan's best thinking got him there. Jonah's best thinking got him in the belly of the sea creature. Alan to a pot grow house in Colorado, right? So he's now the senior minister at CSL Concordia in Rhode Island, and he's very happy. I mean right? We try to take ourselves away. Well, I've got this better idea, you know? I've got this other idea. Spirit's calling you. Spirit's calling you. It's bigger than any idea that you have. And it is, it's just so bountiful and magnificent and present if we will listen to it, you know? So what's it going to take? And Rewinding a little bit to the beginning of the talk when I shared about being in that music and singing and, and, and I was letting go, letting go, slowly letting go and becoming totally present in the spiritual reality and existence of what was happening in the newness of now. God, right? Connected and directed by source energy, filled up, loving, inspired, energetic, we were dancing and singing and carrying on. It was like amazing. And I found myself 
beyond, beyond thought. I was just in the experience 100%, fully, right? Don't we sometimes keep ourselves from being fully in our experience? What would it be like to be fully present and available in the newness of now? What would it be like? Regardless of what happened yesterday, regardless of what happened this moment, this morning, regardless of what happened that makes you think that maybe you aren't enough or it's too late or it's too soon or it can't work, regardless of all of that, what if we were to be totally present in the nowness of this moment, listening to the divine guidance of spirit and not the guidance of our ego? So you're going to hear a song in a little bit that Travis has written, and, and there's a term in that song, and it's a Latin phrase, which is pari passu. And pari passu means with equal step or simultaneously. And it's sometimes translated as ranking equally hand in hand or moving together. Now, when we listen to the guidance of spirit and not the guidance of our ego, we are in harmony with the divine. We can move with equal footing. Have you ever been walking with someone and suddenly you realize that you're both going right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, like you're totally in sync? Like that. We can be that way with equal footing with the divine, but we must allow that movement of ego to dissipate, right? Allow it to dissolve. Because if we allow the movement of ego to guide us, we might lose our balance, we might fall. I remember at a time when I was hiking up Bishop Peak for the first time. Bishop Peak is a big hill in San Luis Obispo. And it's somewhat technical. It's kind of like Yosemite. And I had hiked it up. It's one of the nine sisters, as they call it here in Slo. And it was a little bit technical, right? And there's some rock climbing involved at the end if you want to get to the tippy top. Has anybody in here ever hiked that one? Yeah. All right. You know what I'm talking about. And so um, there's some technical parts. And I remember it was difficult going up, but I pushed through. And uh, but I had a problem coming down, and I was at this certain point, and you all may know if you've done it, the part I'm talking about where the rock seemed a lot longer going down, and I wasn't sure there was a slope and no foothold. Like, how am I going to get, I'm sitting here, and how am I going to get from here to there without breaking something? And suddenly I was consumed with fear, terrified. What's going to happen to me? How am I going to do this? I don't have the same leg length that my husband does. He made it look so easy. And he was standing down there, and he was, he was like spirit saying, come, just put your foot right there. It's going to be fine. But everything was saying, no, I can't. I can't. Have you ever been in that spot, right? Not necessarily in that particular spot on Bishop Peak, but I can't do this. I can't do this. It's impossible. Nope. No. But when I reach the edge of what I think is possible of my resources, that's when spirit steps in if we'll let it, yes? <laughs> Thank you. And spirit was like, just scoot. What? <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. So I didn't need a foothold, and I just went for it. I just scooted a little bit. It wasn't that far after all. And there I was, solid ground. My husband was there with his hand. Oh, right? <laughs> it was that easy. We make things so difficult in our minds. It's really easy, but the calling is for us to put our trust and faith in spirit to be 
in the presence of the divine and to know that that's what's happening. So when we allow the movement of ego to guide us, we might lose our balance or even fall. Or some other qualities come out from the ego unexpectedly, like me yesterday playing ping pong. Oh my gosh, this competitive side of me came out like a monster. I was like, everybody be quiet. I mean, we were at a party having a blast, and, and there were like 12 people, and it was uh, down to me and Leah. Thank you, Leah. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, by the way, you learn a lot about people at Gourmets for God events. Like, Leah played ping pong in high school, I think, and uh, Nancy was really... Nancy! Nancy Reinstein! We were all like, what is happening here? Barbie, oh yeah, Nan the other Nancy. <laughs> oh my goodness, so many good players. Anyway, it was that moment and I was like, everybody be quiet. I gotta focus, you know, it was the final round with me and Leah. And I already knew Leah was gonna win, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me. I was trying to do some head mind games and stuff. But anyway, yeah, what was going on? Who is that? And my husband later was like, what happened in there? <laughs> on the way home, I was like, I don't know. I was totally in it. I was in it to win it. And I... I actually said, I take my ping pong very seriously. <laughs> and after I said that, I was like, something is not right. I need to pray about this. I need to pray about this. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So thank you for loving me. <laughs> anyway, I almost won. <laughs> Oh, man, that was so fun. Um, you know, and then it's like being in touch with that or those parts of ourselves, right, that we may not love or may feel embarrassed about. But look, we can laugh about it and not take it so seriously and let it go, you know, and recognize it for what it is. We have these egoic qualities, and they're okay but we're not letting those guide us, right? We're letting ourselves be guided by the divine. We're not letting ourselves be guided by the ego and what the ego thinks is the thing to do, like my friend Alan, who left his pulpit for pot and spirit called him back to the pulpit. Yeah, took the SWAT team. It took the SWAT team for him, but he heard it. He heard it. <laughs> it doesn't have to take the SWAT team for us, right? It doesn't have to take losing friendships over ping pong. <laughs> and they're like, you need one more point to win. I was like, oh, forget it. <laughs> I surrender. You win. But in that moment, I remember feeling like a spirit's like, this is just a game, you know? This is fun. <laughs> fun, right? <laughs> I laugh because there's a, there's a scene in Friends where Monica gets super competitive. Playing oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll have to watch that one. Monica, all right. So when we come back to this presence of spirit, we return to grace right? We return to that sense of wholeness. And so we rediscover our passion and purpose, and we can let go of tying it in, all of this, trying to tie it all back together with uh, perfectly imperfect, right, passions. We don't have to be perfect, in other words. We're passionate about what we're up to. I'm passionate about being a minister. I'm passionate about delivering the message and being all that I can be as a spiritual leader of a community. I'm passionate about that, right? I'm passionate about it. And I'm not perfect. Don't put me on a pedestal because you will be disappointed, especially if you're at a G4G ping pong event. <laughs> Don't put me on a pedestal, right? You're just here remembering, like, I'm reminding you of things that you already know. I am an aspect of you, right? 
And people are like, oh, great. <laughs> you projected this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Don't put me on a pedestal because of that. So we rediscover our passions and our purpose. Um, and we can let go of thinking that we're supposed to be a different way or thinking that we're not enough or comparing ourselves to others and allow ourselves to be the unique, unrepeatable way that spirit shows up as us. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. So this week, as you move forward throughout your week, the, you're going to be called to question your long-held beliefs and consider if there's anything that you're hanging on to that are based in fear. Any beliefs you're hanging on to that are based in fear and allow yourself to take the opportunity to move into expansion by boldly stepping out of those fears, by stepping out of those beliefs and taking a risk by listening to the guidance of spirit. It will not fail you. It will not. There are no failures anyway, right? So it's a choice that we each have. And let's stop belittling ourselves, yes? Because when we belittle ourselves, we're actually belittling the spirit that created us. And we diminish that power that lies within us. And ask yourself these questions. Where in my life am I not listening to my higher self? Where am I not listening to the divine? Where am I thinking that I know what's better? Where am I thinking that I know what to do and I'm, I've got like my life is this Rubik's Cube that I'm going to solve. And I'm going to keep spinning around and spinning until I get it. You've heard you want to make God laugh? Tell her your plans. <laughs> Where in my life am I not listening to my higher self? And number two, what would my life be like if I synced up? with spirit, you know? What would my life be like if I were to walk in pari passu, moving together with it in equal step? If I can let go of what I think and let spirit take the wheel. Wouldn't that be a great song? Let spirit take the wheel. <laughs> Is it? No wonder I think it's a great song. Okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> All right, and so I just want to also share, I'm going to invite Travis to come up, and we're going to move into our closing prayer, and after that, he's going to play a song. After that, you're going to play In the Moment Came, right? And so in this song, this is uh, the song I refer to about Pari Pasu, and so this song is about awakening or being present to the aha moments in life and being present to our soul connection to source, to the divine. And pari pasu as a reminder means to, uh, it means simultaneously or with equal step. Now let's, yeah, let's turn our attention inward. <clears throat> oh. Hmm. Allow the sound of the guitar strings to take us deeper. And what a beautiful thing it is to know that the guitar on its own is an instrument. And then as Travis picked it up and put his fi fingers on the strings, something is created. There's a sound that is created. There's a vibration that is created and we're hearing it and feeling it in our bodies now. And as we get present to that vibration, we recognize that Something is happening here. There's a creative energy that is working in this moment. And it is the same creative energy that has breathed each one of us into existence. It is the same creative energy 
that caused the planets to be birthed into existence, the entire cosmos, the heavenly bodies, the stars, uh, all of it, the solar system and the multiverse, all of that creativity is right within us now and it is the presence of love, divine, spirit, God, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, whatever you choose to call it. That is the energy that is present here and now and it has breathed us into existence. And I remember in this moment that I, I am the unique, unrepeatable way that spirit has been birthed into existence. It wants to live through me. And this is true for each one of us. It wants to shine. It wants to live out what it came to do and be as me. And I let it. And I allow it to be. And I know that as I go forward from here that this is true for each one of us. That we remember spirit is here expressing itself as me. Who am I to belittle or doubt myself? Because in doing that, I am doubting or belittling spirit itself. And so I have remembered on this day more than ever before my oneness with all of life. I have remembered that spirit is living and moving and having its being through me regardless of what's happening on the outside, regardless of the circumstances that are surrounding me, regardless of the conditions. It is spirit. I am that I am. That is the spirit within each one of us and we are filled with love. Like I am so filled with this divine love and energy in this moment that I feel this sense of vibration and this frequency that is going out from me and it's radiating out from me. Of course, it's radiating out from my mouth right now as the words are spoken, but there's also an energy and it's an atmosphere. And in this atmosphere, there is love. And my mental atmosphere that is carried out into the world draws in the same to it. And that is love too. Oh, it's so good. I know that each one of us is like a pebble that when we leave from here, it's like we are pebbles that have been thrown out into the pond of this wonderful life. And there's a ripple effect. People in our orbit are touched and moved and inspired by our energy, by this love that lives within us. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to be present and available 100% in the newness of now, in this moment right here, right now, walking in Pari Pasu with equal step, with the God of my understanding. It is a sacred and holy walk. I see the sacred, I hear the sacred, I speak the sacred. All life is sacred. And I am so grateful. I'm so grateful for this day. I'm so grateful for this experience of swimming in this beautiful ocean of devotion together this morning. I'm so grateful for the love and the connection and the joy and the beauty and the harmony and so much more. With great gratitude, I allow this prayer to be. I allow it to go into that loving and creative action of the law where I know it is so. And it is already manifest. And each one of us already feels the love that we are. We already know who we are. We are already walking with equal step with the divine. Thank you for these gifts, spirit. What a blessing. And I feel that. I know it is done. And I let it go. And I allow it to be. And so it is. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> thank you, Travis. All right.